Welcome to the day one video. Today is going to be a continuation of section one with graphing, and then we're also going to move on to section two, which is solving exponential functions. For today's video, you are certainly going to need a calculator. There are two objectives. First, we are going to model a given situation using exponential growth or decay, and then we're also going to use the compound interest formula. Now, we have two cases here, exponential growth decay and then compound interest. Fortunately, they both use the same formula. So today's video, I'm going to tell you what that formula is, and then we're going to use it a few times. So first thing we should probably talk about is what is the exponential growth and decay model? Well, the equation is A equals P multiplied by 1 plus or minus R over N to the N T. Okay, so P is your principal or starting amount. So you started with 10 milligrams, you started with 100 milliliters, etc. R is going to be your rate. It always has to be expressed as a decimal. So rate is going to be 10%, 20% but then expressed as a decimal. So 10% is 0.1, 20% is 0.2. N is the number of times per year. In our case, N equals 1, except for compound interest. In compound interest, N is going to change. But in exponential growth and decay, n is just going to stay 1. And then t is going to be time. Um, generally, this is years, could be hours, minutes, etc. Um, a is going to be your final amount. So you're going to be asked to find the amount after 10 years, 20 years, 5 hours, 3 days, etc. Um, last thing that you're going to notice about this equation is we have plus and minus. And you need to choose which one is appropriate for a given situation. If the situation is describing exponential growth, you're going to use addition. If the situation is describing decay, you're going to use subtraction. So you just need to determine, is my population growing? You know, am I describing a situation that something's growing, or is it decreasing? So let's just look at example one. It says the first U.S. Census was conducted in 1790. At that time, the population was 3,929,214. Since then, the U.S. population has grown by approximately 2.03% annually. Write an equation for the population growth of the U.S. since 1790. Use your model to predict the population of the United States in 2025. Okay, so we're asked for two things here. First, we're asked to write an equation for the population. And then we are also asked to predict the population in 2025. So in order to predict the population, we need an equation, a model. So we're going to start by writing that model. Um, as we know, with an equation, we need to have variables. So looking at the equation at the top, A is going to stay A. So I have A equals. P is our starting amount. We are told that in 1790, there were 3,929,214 people. So that's your P. And then I have 1. Now, is it positive? Am I adding or am I, am I subtracting? Well, it says the U.S. has grown. So grown means addition. It's exponential growth. My rate is 2.03%. Move the decimal places, 2 to the left, or divide by 100. As a decimal, that is 0 0.0203. I told you for right now, n is 1, because we haven't gotten to compound interest yet. And then this is all raised to the nt power. Well, n is 1, and t is going to stay t. Remember, this is an equation, so we have to have a variable. We can't substitute for every single variable. Simplifying, this becomes a equals 3,929,214. Inside parentheses, it becomes 1.0203 raised to the t power. And uh, just for good measure, it's always good to identify what that t is. So in our case, it says that the U.S. Census was conducted in 1790. So our t is being counted from 1790. So t is the number of years since 1790. 
And that's going to be really important for the second part of the question. Okay, so that's the first part. That's writing the equation. Now we need to predict the population of the United States in 2025. So we're going to use that model that we have. So I have A equals 3,929,214 multiplied by 1.0203 raised to the T power. Well, what's T? T is not 2025. Because remember, T is counting the years since 1790. So T in this case is going to be 2025 subtract 1790, which ends up being 235. So that's going to be my exponent. Now, you should be able to put this in the calculator exactly as it appears. Remember that the 1.0203 needs to be raised to the 235th power. Then you multiply by the 3,929,214. When you do that, you get the population of 2025 to be about 441,935,660 people. So this is what we predict the population to be in 2025. So this is how a lot of questions are going to look. You're going to have to write a model, and then you're going to have to use it. So if we move a little bit, let's look at example two. It says a cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams of caffeine. The average teen can eliminate approximately 12.5% of the caffeine from his or her system per hour. Write an equation that represents the amount of caffeine remaining after drinking a cup of green tea. Then, estimate the amount of caffeine in a teenager's body three hours after drinking a cup of green tea. As you can see, there's a stop sign. That means you need to pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Two things. You have to write an equation, then you have to estimate the amount of caffeine that's left. Pause the video, try both parts on your own, please, and then come back when you are finished. Good luck! Okay, let's see how we did. So our equation should have been A equals, it says a cup of green tea contains 35 milligrams. So that's what it starts out with, 35 milligrams of caffeine. And then I have one. I need to decide, am I adding or subtracting? Well, it says the average teen can eliminate 12.5% of the caffeine. So that, that includes decay. So that indicates that something is decreasing. So I'm gonna have one minus 12.5% as a decimal is 0.125. Move the decimal places two to the left. N is one. Um, I told you it's going to stay like that until we get to compound interest, which is the next example. That's going to be raised to the nt power. Well, n is one. T stays t. Simplifying, I get a equals 35 multiplied by 0 0.875 to the t power. And t in this case is the number of hours. So the number of hours after this teen has started drinking the green tea. Hopefully that's what you got. And then you had to estimate the amount of caffeine in a teenager's body three hours after drinking a cup of green tea. So that three hours, that becomes our T. So then I have A equals 35 multiplied by 0 0.875 raised to the third power. And when you do that, you get about 23.45 milligrams remain. So if a teenager drinks a cup of green tea after three hours, there's still 23.45 uh, milligrams of caffeine in the teenager's body. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you, you see what mistake you made. If you did make a mistake, it's a very good possibility that it has to do with the calculator. So I want to show you real quick what you would plug into the calculator in order to get this answer. Okay, so if you take out your calculator, you would put 35 multiplied by 0.875 raised to the third power. Hit enter. And that would give you the 23.45 milligrams. What you need to be very careful of is that the 35 and the 0.875 are separated. So instead, if you would put 35 and the 0.875 in parentheses, 
you would have gotten the wrong answer. So those were the first two examples with exponential growth and decay. Now moving on to examples three and four, we're going to introduce compound interest. These are going to use the same formula, except this time n is not going to be one. n is going to change. So let's look at example three. It says, you deposit $500 in an account that earns 3.6% annually. Find the balance after 10 years if the interest is compounded monthly. So I'm going to write our general formula. It's A equals P multiplied by 1 plus or minus R over N to the N T. Okay, so A is what we want to find out. P is what we started with. So it says you deposit $500. So P is going to be 500. It's 1. Okay, then thinking about compound interest. Interest is money that you are given. Um, so it's kind of like when you put money in a bank, you deposit money. They give you a little bit of interest every month just to kind of say thank you for using this bank. So compound interest is always going to grow. You're always getting interest on top of what you already put into the account. So it's always going to be addition. Our rate is 3.6%, but remember that has to be a decimal. So we take the decimal point and move 2 to the left. So it's going to be 0 0.036. Okay, and then it says the interest is compounded monthly. Monthly means 12 times a year. So this time n is going to be 12. And then the power that we raise to is the nt. n is still 12. And then it's 10 years. So t is going to be 10. Now, if I enter this in my calculator right now, I'm likely to make some mistakes. So I want to simplify first. I want to simplify what's in the parentheses, and then I want to simplify the exponent. So this is really A equals 500 multiplied by, once I do that 1 add 0 0.036 divided by 12, that's 1.003. And then 12 multiplied by 10 is 120. And now I can enter this in the calculator just like I did before. When I do that, I get about $716.28. So if I were to invest $500 after 10 years, I would have $716.28 left. And that's assuming that I'm not taking any money out over those 10 years. So the $500 is going to stay in the account. Okay, so that should have been pretty similar to examples 1 and 2. Um, the only difference is that n is going to change. Remember that n is the number of times per year. So again, compounded monthly, that's 12 times a year, 12 months in a year. Okay, let's look at example four. It says, find the account balance after 20 years if $100 is placed in an account that pays 1.2% interest compounded twice a month. As you can see, we have a stop sign here. That means to pause the video and try on your own, please. I'm assuming that you tried this one on your own. The answer that you should have gotten is $127.18. If you got that, good job. If you didn't, you need to go back and find your mistake. If you have any questions, please bring them to class tomorrow. One quick thing before you leave. There is one last question on the top, a little quick trivia question. How many dots are there on two dice? So see if you can calculate that and bring that to class tomorrow. Bring your answer to that question and example four. See you tomorrow.